Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check it out. Diced Tomatoes! This is for two to four players, ages 12 plus, even though I would say disregard that, ages 7 plus. It's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes to play, and this is actually the next game in my Game Crafter Spotlight series, my Bauer Spotlight series, where I take a look at a different Game Crafter game each and every month, and I spotlight it, unboxing it, doing a gameplay session of it, and then wrapping it up with a review. So this is, in fact, a paid review, technically, because they paid me to do the whole segment, so I did want to mention that right at the jump, even though I will not pull any punches, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think about Dice Tomatoes. So if you want to know how the game is played, go watch the gameplay video of it. I'll give you a real short synopsis. Essentially on your turn, you're going to be rolling dice and then you're going to be placing those dice uh, into these cool looking tomatoes right here, trying to get either a set of four numbers or a run of four numbers. When you do that, whichever number happens to be inside that tomato is going to be points you are scored. Along the way, though, you are going to get shafted from time to time. And you're going to have to give people numbers, which you won't want to do, or give them extra dice that they'll have to roll. Or you might sometimes even want to help people out because there's this heart system where you can do some cool special abilities, but the only way you can unlock being able to do them is by helping other people out. But let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. So first on the con side, the rule booklet is probably the biggest con that I have with this game. And not that it's a bad rule booklet, but it needs to be better. It needs an extra layer of polish. And seeing this rule booklet makes me question a little bit whether or not they blind play tested with this particular version of the rule booklet. Because there's some definite things in here where I'm like, okay, I'm not quite sure if we're allowed to do this. I think so, but the rule booklet didn't explicitly, explicitly say it as much as I would like it to. For instance, um, so let's say I have a two inside of here. And then I also have maybe a one up top. If I have a four, can I put the four all the way down here, banking on the fact that I'll get a three later? Or do I have to have the three then to connect the four? And I didn't see an instance in the rule booklet reading through it two or three times where that was covered. Also, what happens when you finally get that run or set of four? Does it happen immediately, even if it's not your turn? Or does it happen right then on your turn? So, Because that is a big deal, whether or not you're going to get those heart points or whether or not you're going to clear uh, a row. How does the timing in the game work? I feel like that really should have been covered a little bit better, in particular in the example right there, which was a little bit of a downer. That being said, you're still going to be able to figure out this game pretty easily because it is a pretty simple game, which brings me to my last comment that I have of this game, is that you're probably going to want a little bit more than this game is offering if you are more on the heavier side of games or even on the mediumer side of games. I think this is definitely a game that's going to appeal more to the gateway crowd, more to the lightweight crowud more to the family weight crowd, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it is something you need to know going into this game. I would probably not play this on my game night, but I did play it on a lighter game night that I go to that I thought would go over well, and it did go over well. Also, surprisingly, it went over well with my wife, which I was not expecting. Oh, last con, two to four players, <clears throat> very restricted play account. Uh, I want more meat on the bones, but that's actually kind of a pro, because moving on to the pros, I enjoy Dice Tomatoes. It was good. Once I knew how to learn the game, and once I understood everything, and I made up the house rules that I had to make up, because they're not clearly explicitly in the rules, which is annoying. I think I got it right, though. It was easy to teach as well. The kids picked it up relatively quickly. My wife picked it up relatively quickly. As you can see in the video, it took her like maybe two turns before it all kind of snapped into place. And then people really start getting into how they're going to use their hearts and manipulating the dice and where they're going to put things and when things are going to happen. And they enjoy that. And I enjoy that as well. And while this game does not have as much meat as I would like it to, I would like it if there were more special abilities that you could utilize with the hearts. Maybe just an extra element added to this game in the future in the form of an expansion would be fantastic. I want that, though, added to the game, and I don't know if this game necessarily would keep my interest, but as a game that I would play with my family and with kids in my class, I'm absolutely going to keep this game. So, here's my final verdict. If you don't have kids, or if you are um, on the high, heavier side of games or the more medium sides of games, I don't think I can pretty probably recommend this game to you. It just is not probably going to be a good fit for you. However, if you do, I definitely think this is a try before you buy game, especially if you're looking for a 15 to 20 minute maybe game right before you go to bed style game. I think this is a good one or a lightweight filler game where you're just more about chit chatting and talking with each other. There's a little bit of backstabbery in here, but not too much with those black dice. Uh, overall, I did. I like Dice Tomatoes, and it's something that I can recommend. I will be keeping it in my classroom, and there you go. If you're look more interested in it, please be sure to click on that subscribe, or not the subscribe button down below, but the uh, link down below, which actually has the place where you can go check it out on the Game Crafter. If you're enjoying what I'm doing, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below, or potentially even consider supporting the Patreon down below. And in the comments below, let me know, when's the last time you cut yourself while cutting something? For me personally, Ooh, I got a nasty one on my finger, and I was uh, I was being really stupid. I uh, 
I don't even remember what I was cutting. I was cutting something that I clearly shouldn't have been cutting with a knife, and I was cutting it with a knife. And it was just like, just I cut it in the worst possible way, so it just immediately started gushing blood down my arm. And I'm like trying to get to a spot where I could clean it off, but like at the same time trying to keep it like elevated so the blood's not dripping, you know, off onto the carpet. So it's like dripping all down my arm, and I'm just like, oh no, don't get all my clothes. But it did get all my clothes, so I had like blood in my armpit. It was a bad situation. A lot of blood. Hurts still now, but it's not the end of the world. But let me know in the comments below. It's the last time you got cut. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.